Configuring locations in Microsoft Search. Have you ever Googled your own company just because you didn't know the address? Me too, and so have your users. How about we provide more value to those users, letting them find locations easily? That's what the locations feature in Microsoft Search is all about. Well, so why do you wanna use this locations feature? Well, think about it from the user's perspective. If you need to find the address of something, you're probably gonna have to Google it. Maybe if it is listed on your intranet, you're gonna have to copy and paste this over into Google Maps or Bing Maps or some other kind of map thing and then search for it there. It's just multiple steps versus this feature, which is all kind of built into one thing, right in your intranet search. Users can find the locations and get directions. It just saves them time, which gives them a better overall experience with that intranet. That's what we're trying to accomplish here. And this feature is definitely gonna be useful. So what are the consequences of users not being able to find answers to their questions? Well, they're gonna start complaining that they can't ever find information on your intranet. If you're maintaining that intranet, then that directly affects you. Word starts to spread that no one can find anything on the intranet. Does that sound familiar? It should because that's one of the most common things I hear from customers regarding search. And it's also one of the big reasons why you should implement locations in Microsoft Search. So what does this feature actually do? Well, it provides the answers that they need regarding locations within the organization. Things like campuses, offices, and buildings. It gives them detailed address information, including how to get directions to those locations. Let's see how this looks to the end user, and then we'll start configuring this for ourselves. So I'm on my sample internet. If I wanna see what the headquarters location is, I can search for it, and you'll see right at the very top above the other search results, the location of the corporate headquarters. In this case, it's Microsoft's. I've got the name of this location as well as the address. I could expand the map if I want to see more information. And I could also click on get directions to see how to navigate to this particular location. Very handy and all I had to do was type in a keyword in this case. Now I've just got one of these configured right now. If we want to add more, and we do, then we're going to go into the M365 Admin Center. And once we're here, we're going to go into settings, and then search and intelligence. That's where all of these different Microsoft search things are configured. And under the answers tab, you'll see the locations feature. You see the corporate headquarters location I've already added, along with some keywords. Now notice you'll see HQ here. That was the keyword I actually typed in. I could have also typed in corporate headquarters. So you've got a few different options here for how you want to present information. I would recommend using the main office location's name, the real name in the name column here and any other keywords you think someone may look up this information using. What other things are they gonna search for? Those are good options to include as those keywords. Now, if we wanna start adding a new location, all you have to do is click this add location button. You can type in the office that you want, whatever that name is, type in the country, and then once you start typing the address, especially after the country's already been filled in, you'll start to see autocomplete information. So here it's already found a potential match for this address. If I just click on this, it fills in all the rest of the information. This is a pretty nice time saver, but if it's not found, you can still just manually put in all the information. Here we put in the keyword that we want for this match. Now the regular keywords can be used across multiple locations, but the reserved keywords can only be used for one location. So if you want to ensure a keyword only returns one specific location, then that's when you would use that as a reserved keyword. Once you're done, you can just hit publish and it's added. Now, one thing to note about using locations in Microsoft Search is that it may take a few hours after you add them before users are able to start seeing those in their search results. This is different from bookmarks and the Q&A feature where changes are applied immediately. It will take some time, but in my case, when I was testing, they were added immediately. Your mileage may vary, but if you don't see them immediately, you'll just need to wait a little while and then see if they start showing up. While you're waiting, you could take a second to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you know when I post more videos about Microsoft Search. Even better, you could share this with a colleague who needs to know about this too. And if you're interested in list and library formatting in SharePoint using JSON, I've got an online course. There's information down in the description below so you can find all the details. Now, you don't have to add everything individually. There's a pretty good chance that you're gonna have an official list of all your locations with address information, in which case you could just do a bulk import of everything. That keeps things very simple 
and if you need to make changes to a lot of items at once, this is a great way because you can export your locations, make all the changes you need to, and then re-import. Let's see how that works. So first, what we can do is export. And if we open this file up, now this is a CSV file. So you could use any text editor you would like, although there are a good number of columns in here. So Excel might make this a bit easier. But in here, you'll see all of the information that we've added in here. The address information, the city, the full address, because I use that autocomplete feature I just showed you when I added this, we even have the latitude and longitude. We also have the keywords, reserve keywords, and then there's four special fields here. There's the state, which could be either draft, suggested, scheduled, or published. Now, depending on the state of that particular record, some of these fields are going to be required. Obviously, with a state of published, you're gonna need most of these fields completed. You'll also see last modified, last modified by, and then the ID. Notice this isn't like a list item ID that you would see in a list or library. It's a GUID, a globally unique identifier. Now it's recommended to never touch these fields. Don't, don't try and change them except for one particular scenario that I'll cover in a minute. But using this import file, we can add any other records we would like to. So let me just copy in some more data. Okay, so I've got a few more offices added in here to cover the sales offices in Bellevue and Portland. All I have to do with this is just save it. And now let's go back into the admin center and get this stuff imported. Notice that I'm leaving off the date modified, modified by an ID. You want all three of these cleared out if you're creating new records. So back to the admin center we go. So we've got our exported file updated. Now we're just going to do an import. And you notice that it already read the file in and it found two locations that need to be added and one location to update. Now we didn't make a change to that original record, but the fact that we are re-importing that same record, it's gonna update anything that we did change. So keep that in mind. If you import a location with the same name, like corporate headquarters, it's going to overwrite the existing record. So let's click on import and get this data imported. All right, it's done. Let's see the results. Now notice you don't see anything in here. And that's because I imported those records as drafts. And if you see the default filter is published. If we click on this and change it to draft, we'll see those new records. So what we can do is click on this, make sure everything looks correct. We can edit this to make any changes we need to. And then once we're done, we can click on publish. And now that just leaves our remaining record here. So again, we can edit and publish because I know everything is good with this. And then we can switch back to our published filter to see all of our published results. So everything's looking great here now. Now, if you're maintaining multiple organizations with an M365, you can export all the locations from one org and import them into an entirely different one. That's perfectly allowed, but you'll need to make sure you delete those ID values from that list because those IDs already exist in the old org. You wanna make sure that you're creating brand new records. So for that, you're just going to delete those ID values and everything will get imported correctly. One other tip for importing these things is that if there's an error in any one of those records, the entire import will fail. It will not do a partial import. So if you see any errors, you're gonna to have to fix them or delete that errored record and then rerun the import so that all of your data comes in. So what was your big takeaway moment from this video? What was your big aha moment? Let me know down in the comments below. I really like the interactive kind of nature of these locations and how they appear to users in search. It's really cool that there's a map feature. They can quickly find directions. It's just a really different, unique experience and something we haven't had before in SharePoint. So let me know down in the comments below what you think. And if you wanna find more information about Microsoft search features, then click the video on the screen to get started with the next one.